In Paul's letter to the Philippians, he writes, if you've gotten anything, anything at all, out of following Jesus, if his love has made any difference in your life, if being in a community of the Spirit means anything to you, if you have a heart, love each other. Be deep, spirited friends. Don't push your way to the front. Don't sweet talk your way to the top. It's not about you. Put yourself aside and help others get ahead. Don't be obsessed with getting your way. Forget yourself long enough to lend a helping hand. In other words, be humble. Now listen, that's a paraphrase from Eugene Peterson's The Message with a few additions of my own, but wow, what an amazing picture of what humility is supposed to be all about. But now listen, this God love, this true marital God love, it's not about a competition. It's not about getting what I want or what I think I need. My wife is not my opponent. She's my helpmate. And her needs are supposed to be more significant than mine. And this is one of those easier said than done things because in this world, mm, <laughs> but regardless people, God's word says this is what humility is and what and how we're supposed to live it out in love. If you look up this word in the dictionary, it says, humility is a modest or low view of one's, and here it comes, own importance. Humility isn't thinking less of yourself, but rather thinking of the other's needs more than yourself. Look what Paul writes, we're called to be free, but we don't have to live in the bondage of our past. We don't have to live in the guilt of all that selfish, self-centered choices we've made of which sin is. And you see, when we really get this, we don't live in that freedom to continue to think about our wants, our needs. But as Paul writes, we are now to be like Jesus, serve one another humbly in love. For that's what God love is. It's humble. But again, it's not going to be easy, and it never will be because most everything around us says the opposite, doesn't it? Let me show you something. When I get this salvation, this unfathomable gift in Jesus, like this gift that without it I die and live apart from Jesus forever, <laughs> that gift, when I really understand that, and, and let's remove Kay, my wife, for a moment. You see, when I really get what Jesus did, and I accept that gift into my heart, my whole being, exchange those vows with Jesus, I don't praise my name. For he gave me a gift that I could never earn or ever repay, right? So what I do with this is I live in gratitude of that gift. You see, because of this newly found relationship with Jesus, I want others to know him, to have the same gift deep in their hearts. So I now want to live in such a way that people will be attracted to that gift. Hence the gratitude, hence the humility. Well, the same is true in marriage. Because of Jesus, I want Kay to have that same attraction, that the Son of God would lay down his life for me like, wow, God, I want her to have that same gift. So show me how to lay down my life for her. And you ready for this? And do you know what he said to me? Well, the same way I laid down my life for you, Keith. The same way I serve you, Keith, in humility. Put her needs first. And when you do this, not only will she be like, wow, I want that, it'll attract many others in the world as well. Now, with that being said, let me put some skin on this. As you go through this week, here's what I want you to do. Try out serving, outdoing, putting their needs first. If you're not married, find ways to live this way among your friends, your coworkers, your employees or employer, depending on your role. Find ways of expressing gratitude, a heart of thankfulness, ways that say, I'm thinking of you, not me or my needs. Hold doors open for them, for others. Don't try to be first in line. Slow down. Don't let your destination be of your highest intention. Hold their hand. Tell them you love them first. Leave love notes. Buy Hallmark cards. Text them throughout the day. You see, we all have some level of competitiveness in all of us, don't we? So use it for this. I mean, if you're going to try to make everything a competition, then try to outserve each other. But let me add one more thing. The world's not gonna agree with this. You're not gonna be reminded of to do this on every turn. The world's not gonna reinforce this. But here's the cool thing. They will take notice. 
because inside every heart, everyone is of want of this, to be loved the right way, the God way. No greater love, think about that. This is what Jesus said, no greater love that you would lay down your life for one's friend. My wife Kay is my friend. In the beginning, it didn't really come out that way, and because of that, we were in trouble. But someone once said this to me, you act your way into a feeling, you don't feel your way into an action. In those beginning years, Kay didn't feel all that much like a friend, but that's where Jesus, his word, came into play, his truths of what love really is. And so in Christ, humbly, that became my focus. Trying in every way, recalling to the forefront of my mind, I will put her needs before my needs. And little by little, well, no greater love than this, that I would lay down my life for Kay, my friend. Listen, start taking those little steps. They don't have to be huge. Just make sure they're true, honest, concrete, and visual. And something amazing will begin to happen. You can do this because I did this. Because in Christ, we can do all things.